Now the last thing that we talk as theory today, then we'll solve the problems. And that is regarding mimicry. Okay, what is mimicry? When a perfectly harmless animal resembles in its color and shape with a well-protected species, the phenomenon is called mimicry. Okay? It occurs when one species resembles another for its own benefit. So, copying other for its own benefit will be termed as the mimicry. Right? And mimicry always gives benefit to the, uh, to the organism is mimicking. Right? The concept of mimicry was first given by W. H. W. Bates in 1862. Usually those species are mimicked which are poisonous, distasteful and have few natural enemies. So in a mimicry there are two things. This is the person to be mimicked. So this is what we, I call as a role model. Right? And this is a person who will mimic. So the role model in this case is an organism who is either poisonous or distasteful no one eats it or it has very few natural enemies. And the mimic, because that's logical, if you mimic that kind of a person or that kind of an organism, then you are protected. Nobody will eat you. Nobody will kill you. So, what are the types of mimicry? These are the five main type of mimicry that we know. Protective mimicry, aggressive mimicry, Batesian mimicry, Mullerian mimicry, auto mimicry. So, auto mimicry and other any types these are less common, but mainly these four types protective mimicry, aggressive mimicry, Batesian mimicry, Mullerian mimicry. Okay, for examples, you see examples with pictures, it is easy to remember. There are some things that you need to remember and write in the exams from this topic. First one is protective mimicry. When the mimicry provides protection to the mimic, it's provide, it's known as protective mimicry. Simple as that. Mimicry is providing protection to the mimic. In this case, you can see two examples are listed here. So the protective mimicry is of two different types: concealing mimicry, warning mimicry. Concealing mimicry is the organism either search a background that matches their color or change their Coloration to fit the background. This is an example of concealing mimicry where this insect looks like a leaf and the resemblance is uncanny. You cannot even differentiate. Right? This is just concealing mimicry. So that this become camouflaged to the background of the leaf and being protected by eaten by insect, uh, I mean insect eaters. And the second type of protective mimicry is warning mimicry, where harmless non-poisonous organism resembles itself to be distasteful or poisonous. Example, example is poisonous coral snake. This is an example of coral snake. So here you can see two examples. The coral snake is normally poisonous, but the scarlet king snake is non-poisonous. So, Kyler's king, king snake looks like a coral snake, but this is non poisonous and this is poisonous. Second type is aggressive mimicry. It is shown by certain carnivorous forms only. What is aggressive mimicry? A predator or parasite species resembles other non threatening species or object in order to gain access to the prey or to the host. Okay. So in that case, it will show friendly behavior so that it gets entry and then it can eat the prey. That is aggressive mimicry. So in this case, earlier it was only, mimicry was only used for protection. But now the mimicry is used for, it's like, a, like mimicry is utilized for their own survival, for eating, for food. Example, the sea dragon. Okay, the sea dragon very similar to that of the structure of other uh, seahorse and other relative species nearby. But in this case, they are carnivorous in nature, so they eat other fishes. Third type, Batesian mimicry. Form of protective mimicry, 
but it's a little special form of protective mimicry in which species that is edible or harmless closely resembles an inedible or harmful species. Therefore, the predators keep distance from them. So again, protective mimicry. For example, viceroy butterfly, monarch butterfly. Okay? Monarch butterfly is distasteful. Right? So, viceroy butterfly mimics monarch butterfly so that Predators don't eat them. What about the people who are eating? They are eating. 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 Cuckoo bee, these are all examples of Mulevian mimicry. Two or more distasteful or poisonous organisms resemble each other. Mulevian mimicry was discovered by Fritz Muller. Right, so they both in this case resemble each other so that they protect them, they are resembling each other so that they are not fighting against each other in that sense. Dujoni Jadi Dharo Aki Hoi, oh, opponent Bustabach in opposition catch. Nale Arjun Arjun Kun Arjun Thagwe, taken a Dujuni Thach. An auto mimicry. Auto mimicry or intra specific mimicry occurs within single species when an animal mimics parts of its own body. Example Pygmy owls has a false eye. You can see this is normal eye. And this is the back side of the head. Looks like an eye. So that is the example of auto mimicry. Okay. This is another example. Uh, false head. False head. This is the real head. This is the end of the wing where they attach some whisker like structures and some black pigmentation. So it seems like two heads in both the sides. So false head and false eye. Examples of auto mimicry. What is the cause of mimicry? Now you may ask a question like why do we need mimicry? In simple terms, you know, it's mostly protective in nature. It helps protecting the mimic from being eaten by the predator. Sometimes it's also helping the mimic to uh, catch the prey and eat it, right? So in both this aggressive mimicry and uh, protective mimicry. But actually natural selection, according to Wiseman, the natural selection is the only known factor that actually cause the production of mimicry, right? Isn't it? Because ultimately what is the goal? The survival. And they are trying to survive. Any adaptation, any changes, any morphological changes to the body. And in this case, we are looking at pigmentation changes, dramatically the morphological changes. That leads to the survival of an organism, right? So obviously that organism will be selected and the next generation will be of that kind, of that category. So that's how it's being done. Such sudden mutation and its preservation by natural selection and due to the direct action occurred upon the organism by the food, temperature and cool. But primarily what I can say is that mainly uh, due to the food source that they are going to get and if they survived, then they transfer that feature to the next generation. So the morphology that we observing that they acquired is transferable. So then generation after generation would have that change, that modification. So mimicry is stabilized by the natural selection. Okay. So again from mimicry part, you will see question from match the column type. Okay. Or the mixed type of question which you can answer based on this idea. But remember what kind of mimicry does what.